Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the Maytag dryer drive motor. It's going to be a very easy repair and it's only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open the package, you're going to get the wire connectors and the new drive motor. The drive motor drives the drum and the blower wheel. The main reason you be changing it out so the bearings have failed and it's making noise or the motor itself has failed and the blower and the drum aren't turning to dry the clothes. In order to change the part, we have to take the dryer apart. First thing we're going to do is take out the lower screws with the Phillips screwdriver so we can remove the front panel. Now we can take the front panel off. We just have to lift it up a little bit so the clips come out of the top and it drops down. Once you have it free, you can set it back down and then we're going to carefully swing it out of the way. There's enough wire here so you can just swing it around and lay it across the side of the cabinet. Now we're going to remove the bulkhead. We're going to use a 5 16 inch nut driver to remove these four screws to hold it on. But first we're going to unclip this wiring harness holder just so it's out of the way. Once you have that off, we can take out the screws. Once you have the screws out, we can carefully lift the bulkhead off. We're going to swing it aside, just like the front panel, set it on the side. Now that we have the bulkhead off, we can lift up the top. There's a screw on each side that holds it in. We're going to use a ratchet with an extension and a 3 8 inch socket to reach in and take them out. Now that we have the screws out, we're going to lift the top up. There's no hinges on this particular style at the top, so you can put a towel across the front and lean it against the wall behind the dryer. We're going to lift it up and use a lanyard to support it because we don't have a wall behind us. So we're just going to take the lanyard, hook it in the frame, and then hook it on the top. Now we can reach in and take the drive belt off the pulleys. We're just going to grab the idler and pull it towards the side of the machine. And then take the belt off the idler and the motor pulley. Now we can take the drum out. Just going to lift up on the belt and guide it out of the frame. Once you have it out, you can set it aside. Now that we have the drum out of the way, we can take the blower housing cover off. We're going to use a quarter inch nut driver to remove all the screws that hold it on. Once you have those out, we have to remove the screw that holds it to the bottom of the dryer. We're going to use a 5 16 nut driver to take that out. Once you have all the screws out, you can lift it off and just swing it out of the way. Now that we have the cover off, we have access to the blower wheel. It's held on by a clamp. We're going to reach in with the needle nose pliers and compress it to open it up. Once you have it off, you can set it aside. Then we have to remove the snap ring that holds it on. If you have a snap ring pliers, you can just stick the pins in there and open it up and pull it off. If you don't have one, you just going to use a small flathead screwdriver to get it off. So we're just going to line it with little holes up with the flat on the motor shaft so we can get the flathead screwdriver in there, pop it off. Once you have it off, you can set it aside. Once you have the snap ring off, we can just grab the 
blower wheel and pull it off the motor shaft. Once you have it off, you can set it aside. Now that we have access to the motor, we can see what type of motor switch it has. This is the old style one with all the individual wires on it. If you already have the new style motor switch, then all you have to do is unplug the wire harness from it and swap the motor out. Because we have the older style, we have to rewire it a little bit and put some new terminals on them. First thing we're going to do is reach in and remove the ground wire off the motor. We're just going to use the quarter inch nut driver to take off the screw. Then we're going to remove the clamps that hold the motor down. There's one on each end. You just want to grab a large flathead screwdriver and hook underneath it while pressing down and pushing towards the side of the dryer. Once you have one side off, you can just unhook the other side and pull it out. The other one comes off the same way. Once you have the clamps off, we can reach in and carefully lift up on the motor and pull it towards the back so the shaft comes out of the blower housing. Then we're going to tilt it up so you can see the wires before we take them off. They're all color coded, red, purple, blue, yellow, and black. So we're going to reach in and take them off with a needle nose pliers. Once you have all the wires off, we can lift the old motor out. Now that we have the motor out, we have to take the drive pulley and the other snap ring off. Before you take the drive pulley off, we're going to measure it so we can make sure it goes onto the new motor shaft the same depth. You want to make sure that the paper goes all the way in and goes against the bearing right there. And then you want to mark it right here. Can use that as a measurement later. Should be about three eighths of an inch. Then we're going to use a three sixteenths inch Allen wrench to loosen up the set screw. Should be in there pretty good, so you may have to get some pretty good leverage on it. Once you have it loosened up, you can pull the motor pulley off and set it aside. To remove the snap ring, if you have the snap ring pliers, all you have to do is spread it apart and take it off. If you just have a flathead screwdriver, you can do the same thing and make sure it's lined up with the flat on the motor shaft and just kind of get it out of the groove. Once you have it out of the groove, you can just slide it up the shaft. If it gets caught in the second groove, you'll have to take it out of there too. Once you have it off, you can set it aside. Here's the old drive motor next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at appliancepartspros.com. Here's the instruction sheet that tells you how to identify what motor switch you have, and also the wiring instructions that show you how to change over from the old style to the new style. There's also a couple notes down here, and you are going to have to splice on a couple wires. We're going to show you how to do it on the model that we have. Yours may be a little bit different, so make sure you look at the instructions. Before we put the new motor in, we have to put the snap ring and the pulley on. We're just going to slide it over the shaft. Remember, if you got the little snap ring pliers, you can just use the little pins and stretch out the snap ring and slide it on. Otherwise, you're just going to have to work it on with a flathead screwdriver. Once you have it in the second groove, you just want to make sure it's in place and then we can put the motor pulley on. You just want to make sure that the set screw is lined up with the flat on the motor shaft and push it on. And then we're going to take the 3 16 inch Allen wrench and snug down the set screw a little bit. It'll make it tight 
just make it so it locks it onto the flat of the shaft. Then we're going to take that piece of paper and push it into the seat of the bearing like we did before, making sure that it's three-eighths of an inch before we tighten down the pulley. If not, you may need to move it in or out a little bit. Once you have it lined up, you can grab the 3 16 inch Allen wrench again and snug it down. Then we're going to tighten it down. You want to make sure you tighten this down pretty good. It has to be tight enough so it doesn't come loose and the pulley falls off and your belt falls off. Once you have it snug, you can even give it a few taps with the hammer to make sure it's tight so you don't want it to fall off. Once you have the motor pulley on, again, put the motor in the dryer. Now we're going to put the new terminals on. We have to do it to the yellow wires and the red wire. So we're just going to take our wire cutters, cut the old terminals off, and then strip the wires back about a quarter of an inch. And since this is a double one, want to make sure the wires are together. I have to go into the one terminal. Once you have the wires ready, you can slide the terminal on. Make sure it goes down far enough so the wire goes into the actual holder. Then we can grab the pliers and crimp it down. Once you have it crimped down so it's secure, we can do the red one. Once you have them both secure, we're going to split the wire apart. On the old one, on our model, the gray went over to the left side of the motor. But since it's going to go to the protector, we're going to make sure it stays over on the right side when we put the motor in. Now we're going to set the motor back in place real quick. Not all the way in. We're just going to set it here and use the quarter inch nut driver to put the grounding screw back in. Just want to grab the wire and line it up. Turn it down. Once you have the ground screw tightened down, we can lift the motor up and set it in place. I'm just going to put the shaft through the blower housing. And you want to make sure that the blue rubber grommets line up on the holders. And you want to make sure that the motor switch is about where it was before at the same angle. Once you have it in place, we're going to put the clamps back on. To put the clamps on, we're just going to make sure one side hooks over and onto the mount. We're going to use the flathead screwdriver and press down on the other side to get it to lock in. Once you have it locked in place, we can connect the wires. According to the instruction sheet, we have to remove the jumper wire that goes from the protector to the motor switch. So we're going to use a needle on those pliers to take it off. Once you have the jumper wire off, we wrote down the terminal numbers and which wires go there. Because the numbers on the top of the switch right here, you can't read once you have it installed. So we're going to go from terminal 1 
which is the blue and white, or maybe just the blue, depending upon what your model has. And the second one we're not going to use. And we're going to hook the red one to terminal number five. And then on the other side, we're going to connect the gray wire to the protector. And we're going to have the yellow wire to number six. And the black wire to number two. You want to double check and make sure you have everything hooked up the way the instructions said. Once you're sure you do, you can put the dryer back together. To put the blower back in, you want to make sure that the flat on the motor is lined up with the flat on the blower. You push it back into place. Once you have it in place, we can put the snap ring back on. If you have the pliers, you can just use that. If you have the flathead screwdriver, you can just put the snap ring in, in the groove and then stretch it around so it goes in the rest of the way. Then we can put the green clamp back on. We're just going to use the needle nose pliers to compress it and slide it over the blower wheel. Once you have it in place, we can put the blower housing cover back on. All you have to do is grab the cover and swing it around back in place. Once you have it lined up, we can use the quarter inch nut driver to put all the screws in. Then we can use the 5 16 inch nut driver to put in the screw that holds it to the bottom. Once you have the cover on, we can put the drum back in. To put the drum back in place, just want to feed it back through the cavity and make sure it sits on the rollers. Once you have it in place, you can let the belt drop. You want to make sure that it goes in the same mark that it was before. You don't want it to fall into this groove, otherwise it'll be too long. And you want to make sure that the flat is against the drum, not the grooves. To put the belt on, all you have to do is reach in and route it through the pulleys. And make sure it goes around the idler pulley. And then you can push the idler pulley over towards the side of the dryer. And make sure it wraps around the little finger that keeps it on the pulley. Then you want to take the other end of the belt and loop it around the motor pulley. Once you have it on, we can put the rest of the dryer back together. Sometimes on this design of dryer, the belt is hard to put on from the front the way it's routed through the pulleys. So some of the models actually had an access panel on the back where you could access it that way. So if you're having problems doing it through the front, you can always check to see if you have an access panel and then pull the dryer out and do it from the back if it's easier. Before we put the bulkhead back on, we're just gonna grab the wire harness clip that we let drop down earlier and bring it up here so we can put it on later. Then we can grab the bulkhead and line up the duct at the bottom and lift the bulkhead up into place. You may have to move the drum around a little bit to get it to sit on the glides properly. Once you have the bulkhead in place, we can use the 5 16 inch nut driver to put the screws in. To put the top down, we're just going to 
remove the lanyard and carefully set it down. Once you have it down and lined up, we can put the screws back in. We're going to use the ratchet with the extension and the 3 8 inch socket to put the screws back in that hold the top on. Once you have this one on, we can do the other side. Before we put the front panel back on, we're just going to put the little wire holder in. So the wires are held in place. Once you have it in, we can put the front panel back on. To put it back on, we're just going to swing it back around into place. And then you want to make sure that the little tabs right here line up with the cutouts in the top. Then we're going to put it in like we took it off. We're going to put it at a little bit of an angle. Make sure the clips go in and it doesn't drop down. Once you have it in place, we can use the Phillips screwdriver to put the screws in. Once you have the dryer put back together, you can plug it back in and, and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.